With a Democrat in the White House, you can't go too long without a climate change lecture. And today, President Biden made a stop in Dearborn, Michigan at the Ford Rogue Electric Vehicle Center to champion the progressive left's favorite mission, of course, ending climate change. Pushing for the $2 trillion American Jobs Act, an infrastructure plan that will dump billions, hundreds of billions, into electric vehicles, which, of course, is not infrastructure. When I think of the climate crisis, Beyond its devastation of lives and livelihoods and health of our very planet, I think jobs. I think jobs when I think climate change. I think government when I think climate change. Beyond the devastation, he also said, uh, the left, of course, has been promising that climate change is a pending disaster for decades now. I read articles from the 70s about this. This devastation has not yet arrived, as we know. The Democrats have both houses of Congress and the White House right now. So this is the moment to get some pretty crazy stuff passed, of course. Anybody who's actually read up on this American jobs plan, the infrastructure bill, as they call it, knows the real truth. Infrastructure was the last thing on the minds of the people who wrote this bill. This is about further socializing our society through more entitlements and government picking winners and losers when it comes to energy. The country that had just become energy independent in the last administration, a net exporter of fossil fuels, ready to give all of that up in its mission for green, renewable energy. But of course, you don't sell a radical left-wing bill like that. You sell it with a 78-year-old fake moderate career politician who's been in D.C. for 45 years, talking like an old-fashioned gritty American about jobs and unions and roads and highways and airports. Take a listen. We're going to put Americans to work modernizing our roads, our highways, our ports, our airports, rails, and transit systems. That includes putting IBEW members and the union workers to work installing 50,000 charging stations along our roads and highways, our homes and our apartments. Again, this is how government creates jobs. It steals your tax dollars and builds what? It wants what it deems is necessary, not what you want, not what society or the free market demands. By the way, that zippy new Ford F-150 Lightning that Biden was driving around in today, it's going to cost you about $70,000. It's really a statement on how expensive everything's getting in this country. But Biden and company are making that electric truck look more attractive every day as they force the price of gas through the roof. They're really good at that. It was a buck eighty-seven last year. Now it's over $3.00. Democrats claim to be the party of science, but they are not the party of logic, it would seem. How many environmentalists have actually had an honest conversation about how their Prius actually runs? Democrats love to pretend that these zero-emission, battery-powered, funny-looking little cars just run on fairy dust. Every electric car owner has a charger in their garage. That charger is plugged into a wall. That outlet is charged by a power company, and that power company probably burns coal, maybe natural gas, something else to get their power. According to the Energy Department itself, look here, about 60% of this electricity generation was fossil fuels, coal, natural gas, petroleum, and other gases. About 20% of it was nuclear, and about 20% was from renewable energy sources. So that's how this country is powered, and that is how your Prius is powered. 20% of it from renewable. Democrats, of course, hate that reality. They want to end fossil fuels. Here, of course, is the rallying cry. Our North Star is 100% renewable energy. Because it has to be replaced by renewable energy. A transition to renewable energy. We need massive renewable energy. Renewable energy. And there's nothing wrong with renewable energy. I would put solar panels on top of my house. I get it. But it ain't there yet. The left wants to redesign our entire energy policy around solar and wind. But interestingly enough, the social justice warriors inside the White House are pushing back against some very common sense alternatives to the traditional burning of fossil fuels like carbon capture and nuclear. Check out this headline from The Hill. White House environmental justice advisors express opposition to nuclear and carbon capture projects. Dan Crenshaw one of our favorites here comes in with a great response in a tweet. Tell me you're not serious about reducing emissions without telling me you're not serious about reducing emissions in response to that article. It's funny to watch liberal agendas collide. What's more important, ending climate change or promoting some kind of racial environmental justice? 
There wasn't an explanation for why the White House social justice warriors have a problem with nuclear energy or carbon capture. They just said that those are the types of projects that will not benefit a community. And therein lies the problem with having a volunteer environmental justice advisory board in the White House. It's probably made up of idiots. Here's a wake-up call for them. Not everything is about social environmental justice. It's just not, no matter how much you want it to be. Biden created this group by executive order at the same time that he declared to the United States on his first day in office that everything in this administration was effectively going to be about race. You remember that day. So now he has to listen to nonsense like this every time he tries to get anything done from this little group barking in his ear about environmental justice. On the one hand, it's hilarious to watch this White House yet again hamstring itself. On the other hand, it's just another example of how useless government can really be. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.